In Unraid 6.9, the ability to have multiple cash pools within the same Unraid system was added. And in this video, we'll be going over how to move your Docker and VM files from one cash pool to another, along with some gotchas I faced along the way. The steps I'll be going over in this video can also be used to move your Docker or VM files either off of your cache drive and onto your array for permanent use, or off of your array and onto your cache drive. I will not be covering how to make a second or third pool as there are plenty of other helpful videos out there already on how to do so. I also recommend making appropriate backups of any data you will be moving that you do not want to lose just in case something happens. This is especially the case if you are running a Plex docker as it seems Plex is very temperamental even from just being looked at, or at least it is for me. For me, I wanted to have a separate pool set up just for docker and VM images, while I have a standalone cache pool for actual cache functionality. Currently, I have my docker containers and VMs on my original cache pool and I'm not using the cache functionality as the cache pool is pretty much full. To get started, first shut down any docker containers or VMs that are running on your Unraid server. Next, disable the docker and VM services, or if you're only moving one of them, the service for the one you are moving. Both can be found under System Settings on the Settings page. To disable, go into the settings for the service and change Enable from Yes to No, and then click on Apply. Since I am moving both Docker containers and VMs, I will need to disable both services. With the necessary services turned off, we can move the container and VM data. Unfortunately, you're not able to just copy all of the files off of the cache pool and onto the new pool due to file permissions. And after doing some research, it appears the best way to complete this data move is with a multi-step process. The first step is by using the built-in mover to have your container and VM data moved onto your array. Which depending on your system, speed of disks, and the amount of actual data being moved, this can take several hours. After the mover finishes moving the container and VM data over to your array, you'll then use the mover a second time to move the data off of your array and onto the new pool where the files will be used. To actually accomplish the first step, we'll need to make some changes to our share settings before initiating the mover. For Docker, we'll need to change the cache settings for app data, and for the VMs, we'll need to change settings on the domains and system shares. Under each share, use cache pool needs to be set to yes. Doing so allows for the mover to transfer files from the cache to your array. Because I'm moving both Docker and VM, I'll need to make the change to the app data, domains, and system shares, making sure to click on apply before moving on to the next one. With the appropriate shares configured, you should see yes listed under cache for each share that will be moved. To invoke the built-in mover, navigate to settings and select scheduler under user preferences. If you are using tabs like I am, you'll need to select the mover settings tab. Here you can click on Move Now to manually trigger the mover. Just keep in mind that it will probably take a while. Also a side note, I had mover logging enabled, which ended up filling out my logs from initiating this process due to the amount of files being moved. I'd recommend disabling logging, at least for this, to prevent any issues like I had. Clicking on Move Now will trigger the mover and after a few moments, you should get a confirmation on the screen that the mover is running. As mentioned previously, the mover will most likely take several hours to complete moving your files depending on how much there is to move. You can watch the reads of your source pool and the writes on your array to see if the data is still moving or not. And you can check the amount of free space on your cache if you know about how much data you expect to be moved. It will also say the mover is running on the mover settings page until it's completed. A second location to initiate the mover is under array operation for your array. Clicking on move towards the bottom will initiate the mover manually and the screen will update when it starts and when it finishes as well. Once the mover completes, you should see all of your container and VM files gone. I did have an app data folder left with some subfolders, but after going through them, they were all just a few empty folders for a few different apps. Taking a look through them, I saw that there was no actual files. Further investigation within the GUI folder explorer showed the folders were in both the original location on my cache pool and within the array, which indicates they were most likely duplicates. The other file is the docker image file. This file is where the Docker binaries are installed and should not have any variable data stored as long as things are configured properly. You can just have a new Docker image created in your final location, but I'm going to make a copy of it and move it to my new pool. Next will be to move the Docker and VM data off the array and onto the new pool, which is the final location for them. To do this, we will first set the share cache settings again. This time, we will set use cache pool to prefer, and we will make sure to select the correct cache pool for the final destination. In my case, the final location is a pool called Docker. 
Because I'm moving both Docker and VM, I'll need to make this change on the app data, domains, and system shares, making sure to click apply after making the changes. With all three shares having their cache settings set to prefer, it's time to initiate the mover again manually, which again can be found under user preferences and settings under scheduler or under array operations within the main array settings. This move will also take a while depending on your system. After the appropriate data is moved off the array and onto the destination pool, the next step will be to turn back on the Docker and VM services. While doing so, we'll need to make a few tweaks as well. For Docker, I need to update the vDisk location. It was originally set to my old cache pool and it needs to be updated to the new pool that I called Docker. Once that is changed, we can enable the Docker service by setting Enable Docker to Yes and clicking on Apply. For VM Manager, all that is needed is to enable the service by changing the dropdown to Yes next to Enable VMs and applying the change. One thing I did notice was that for my satisfactory container, it was created using a volume map pointing to mount cache app data instead of mount user app data like the rest of the container mappings. Having it set up like this means that the container would be looking for the app data folder on my cache drive, whereas if it was set up to use mount user app data, the container would use the correct location for the app data share mapping no matter where it is moved to. To fix this, I'm just going to update the mapping to use the mount user location, which means if I ever move app data again, it won't be an issue. With the three shares moved over to the new pool, let's test things out to make sure my containers in VM work still. Great, my containers and VMs are functioning while running on my new dedicated Docker pool and my original cache pool is now free to be used for cache functionality within Unraid. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows that they should show it to other people. And if you want to learn more about how you can help protect your Unraid data from ransomware, make sure to check out my video going over how I have my shares set up to limit my exposure to a ransomware attack. Thank you for watching.